Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who looks shows just like Irish peasants of assholes? Current events fans. I'm Useful Idiot, and today I would like to talk about Syria and my belief that Syria is not our enemy. And um, this is another subject I've kind of avoided up until now because I wanted to see how these events unfolded a little bit more so we could fit it into the big picture. And um, I think the big picture to me is actually going back into a little Syrian history to give us a context. And of course, uh, we don't need to go all the way back in Syrian history as it is a nation that has a rich tradition that goes back probably old, older than any other single country on this planet. And, um, and of course, Damascus, Syria, is the longest continually inhabited city in the world to bear that fact out. So anyway, so first of all, what's important to know about Syria is that they're 74% Sunni and 12% Shiite. So it's a kind of the opposite of what the uh, Muslim makeup of Iraq was. So the Shiites are actually in the minority and are the dominant uh, force there, even though most of the country is Sunni. So that's a, uh, that's a seed for the discontent that we see in that country right now, that the Sunni majority will want to take over and run things. And I think that is at the heart of what's going on in Syria. So, let's go back and look at a little bit of history. It was created as a French mandate after World War I in 1918. And um, by 1946, it got its independence and became a parliamentary republic. And between 1949 and 1971, there was a history of coup and coup attempts. Of course, the inevitable CIA back coup attempts too. So just like most of the countries in Southeast Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East, um, there's good reason for them to resent American meddling in their foreign affairs for decades and decades going back into the 20th century. So, and, and of course, as most people know, between 1963 and just up until recently, 2011, all constitutional rights were suspended in Syria. There was emergency rule. And this has been uh, ever since the Assad family has been ruling over Syria. And um, Bashar Assad's father ruled uh, Syria from 1971 to 2000, so for 30 years. And now Bashar al-Assad has been president since the year 2000. And um, so that's one of my uh, planks of why I'm concerned about what's going on in Syria, because uh, Bashar al-Assad has been president for 12 years and running that country, and um, they haven't really had too many uh, foreign policy faux pas of recent. So why did they recently become a target along with this other um, spread of Arab Spring across the uh, Arab world? So interesting timing. Why all of a sudden he's one of the most bloodthirsty cutthroats in the world after uh, having fair amount of popular support for the last 12 years ruling over Syria. But anyway, um, and then some other seeds of uh, what we see currently going on in Syria that go have a, uh, quite a legacy is one is that Russia and Syria have been very close since 1956. So of course Russia, um, their last um, foreign military base is a uh, Navy port in Syria. Uh, they have a relationship that stretches back well into the Cold War and uh, 60 years ago. So there is that tradition. And there, the other tradition that uh, we need to pay attention to is there's been a lot of uh, animosity between Syria and Turkey going back into the 50s, including a lot of border clashes and, and um, struggles with Kurdish uh, minorities. So, um, and then, of course, Syria was part of wars with Israel in 1948, 1967, and 1973. In, in one of those uh, wars, they lost access to the Golan Heights, uh, which is very important to Israel. Um, they get a, a significant amount of their water from the Golan Heights. And then uh, in uh, Lebanon, they've been in Lebanon since a 1976 invasion. So Syria had occupied Lebanon for nearly 30 years, and this ended in 2005. But uh, Syria still has a huge presence in Lebanon, and that's why events in Syria and Lebanon tend to overlap. And um, also very crucial in, in Syria's history is looking back in the period between 1976 and 1982, the Muslim Brotherhood 
waged an armed insurrection back then. So this uh, recent uprising is not unprecedented. Um, in fact, uh, the Syrian government used the same tactics back then under Assad's father and destroyed the city of Hama um, with 10 to 25,000 dead and wounded. So uh, this Muslim Brotherhood uh, armed insurrection is not a new thing. So. That gives credence to the idea that this is a uh, long-growing civil war that's being uh, now fomented and supported and backed up by foreign governments in order to facilitate regime change. And I would suggest that all governments really have a, a, a duty to stay out of this and let Syria um, deal with its own problems. And uh, for Assad to, to put down an armed insurrection in his own country, I suspect um, is his right as the ruler of that country because we, we would see that in any state in this world across Europe and America and uh, in the Middle East. That's what states do. They put down insurrections. And um, I don't have to like it and I don't have to approve it. I don't have to think it's ethically right. And I don't have to like his terms um, and methods for putting down this insurrection. But, um, you know, what happens within Syria, I. I can't help but say is their business. So um, when uh, Assad was um, elected, there was a lot of hopes of reform. But as in most status, of course, he clamped down when freedom presented uh, results that he didn't approve of. And then, of course, Syria has also been uh, linked with, to Hezbollah and Hamas, two terrorist groups. And um, so that hasn't helped their cause. And, um, and uh, another thing that people, I think, forget now, and that's uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, in 2007, Israel bombed a nuclear site in Syria. And I was always struck by the fact that nothing really became of that, and no states went to war with each other, but Israel took it upon themselves to go ahead and bomb a, a Syrian nuclear site that was being uh, built with North Korean technology. So, anyway, there is a an interesting background on where, why we've arrived at where we have in Syria now, although I would suggest that uh, this current situation is far more complex, and that's where I have some serious problems, so, so to speak. Um, certainly there's been 10,000 insurgents killed since the Syrian uprising has started, but there's also been six to 7,000 military and police casualties too, so this is a, a pitch battle. and um, we also have the complications of a Syrian free army, which is being created with a lot of Syrian army deserters who are being armed and trained in Turkey and then sent back over the border in to Syria. And I think this is a very precarious foreign policy for Turkey and the United States and Israel and Saudi Arabia and Qatar as well, who are supplying arms to the free Syrian army. And the CIA has also been providing arms. So it's interesting to have Hillary Clinton rattling her sword when the CIA is actively involved in arming the uh, insurgents. And, and as I've said in earlier videos, too, we have a situation where al-Qaeda elements are also being used to destabilize in Syria. And in fact, a lot of the massacres that have been happening um, in the media have been attributed to Assad whereas eyewitnesses on the ground say that a lot of uh, actual terrorist elements and al-Qaeda elements and uh, anti-government forces are responsible for some of these massacres. Let's not forget that there's an underwriting ethnic rivalry going on in Syria as well, which is going to complicate things when these massacres happen. But credibility is certainly undermined when we find news stories and photos that are uh, from other places and times being used by mainstream media to further the agenda of this uh, imminent attack on Syria, which is what they're um, going after. Um, and then also we have uh, that story where 40 German nationals from private security firms have been uh, arrested by the Syrian government in Syria. So we know that there's mercenaries, we know that Mossad, we know the CIA, we know that MI6, um, we know all of these elements, Al-Qaeda, are all in Syria stirring up this pot. And um, I uh, have a lot of mistrust when everybody starts meddling. So I, I suggest that 
Syria is not our enemy, and we should stay out of this, and we certainly do not need to escalate our presence there or um, in, in to, uh, introduce a NATO presence to affect regime, regime change in Syria. And um, I know a lot of people have a lot of mixed feelings on this. A lot of people are confused because there's a lot of uh, disinformation out there in the mainstream media. I will add, uh, finally, though, that um, I will provide a link below that suggests that a lot of the uh, Muslim Brotherhood people are a, a, a very interesting crowd. And members of the Syrian National Council, which is the opposition against the Syrian government, are loaded with CIA operatives and people with associations with the Council of Foreign Relations attendees of the Bilderberg um, meetings um, and people who have associations with the Ford Foundation, Kissinger, Cheney, Carl Rowe, the entire uh, Project for a New Century crowd. So that certainly complicates things considerably. So feel free to check out that link. So Syria, very complicated situation, and uh, I hope the U.S. does not get involved in Syria. It's hard for me to imagine that they would, certainly before the election, um, as much as there has been a lot of speculation. Um, but we shall see. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one, too. And don't, Syria, please, don't you be a useful idiot, too.